What's going on guys? National Master James Canty the third here with chess.com and today we have game of the day with Magnus Carlsen chess tour the finals with the white pieces we have Dean Loren and with the black pieces we have Magnus Carlsen. Let's get right into it here. Dean responds and goes with d4 and knight f6 from Magnus. c4 and then g6 in a hypermodern setup and then we have g3 here. Very flexible, the Finchetto variations of some of the Indians or a Grunfeld. And here, this this is usually a very hard test to Black's position, and it gives a lot of players problems. So if you are playing with the white pieces and you have problems against some of the Indian setups, you might want to try the G3 options because it does pose problems for people playing with the black pieces. G3, bishop to G7, and bishop G2. Then after castles and knight C3, standard development, guys, Black plays D6. And Magnus opts for the King's Indian defense and no Grunfeld. Of course, we can't play d5 anymore because it's clamped anyway. So there will be no Grunfeld. So we choose d6. And then after d6, knight f3 from Ding here. Now, a little bit about this game and actually about the players. Ding Loren is actually a King's Indian specialist. King's Indian defense specialist, guys. He plays it with the black pieces. He has many, many, many games with it. And I've actually looked myself because I have some model games that I was like, Ding Loren. That's awesome that he actually played these type of moves and what happened in those games. But he actually is a Kings Indian defense specialist. With that being said, guys, Magnus is playing what Ding Loren played. So imagine the psychological aspect there of what Ding may be thinking and how he will approach this game. So after knight f3, there's knight to c6 on the board. Knight to c6, which is a very common move here in the Kings Indian. You also, against the Finchetto variation guys there's a lot you can do knight a6 you can play c5 you can also play e5 you can also play knight b to d7 which is what i choose now uh usually against um against the finchetto variations here and going more of the classical bronstein type of uh positions because knight c6 does have some problems here and it is a hyper modern setup it's absolutely a great move to make here and magnus play knight to c6 it does pose problems sometimes for a very a well prepared player with the white pieces after knight to c6 castles e5 very aggressive move you have to strike the center this is just kings and in stuff guys you're going to give up the center early on like we did playing d6 and then we're going to attack it later so knight to c6 and e5 it just makes sense to do this kind of thing now pawn takes e5 and actually magnus had a game against ali reza Ferruja, uh, where he actually um played the white pieces on his side and now with him playing the black pieces and his position is something remarkable here but he did play with the white pieces against Ali Reza Ferruja and ended up winning a very nice game after taking on e5 but after e5 here white played d5 and actually this is more of the standard way you would play against the king's indian here grab as much space as possible and try not to let him get any type of pawn breaks and if they do you need to be prepared for them because f5 and f4 should be coming you know, you should play your pawn structure tells you where you should be playing so this side of the board absolutely just says we're going to play to this side now you do have knight to b8 followed by knight a5 and knight d7 but magnus actually chose just the knight e7 option here so now we're going to move this knight and play f5 it's very straightforward here guys very straightforward king's indian now of course ding Loren, being a king's indian player knows that f5 is coming but let's see how he proceeded here he played e4 first very standard move here you just have to close up the center make it solid and eventually maybe even play f4 ourselves after e4 b6 is on the board here just stopping the expansion of the queen side play in the king's indian defense usually it's a race on both sides of the board usually it would be different in in, in races where the kings are castled on opposite sides but in this kind of race the kings are on the same side of the board so with that being said here the queen is actually or white actually likes to um to expand on the queen side with a3 b4 c5 very quickly while black's doing the opposite actually playing f5 f4 g5 rook f7 bishop f8 rook g7 and just trying to uh, do a king side storm and win on, on the side of the board so with that being said here after b6 rook to b1 is the move here preparing b4 and of course we see a5 from magnus you're not going to play b4 we're not going to get any of this play going anytime soon um, not on the queen side at least now after a5 he plays rook to e1 very interesting move here interesting move and then we say interesting because usual lines here would be knight to e1 followed by knight to d3 and playing f4 maybe even h3 to stop bishop g4 but you really sometimes you don't care if it gets there we can always kick it anyway but you you would usually see knight to e1 sometimes knight to h4 here but rook to e1 is very interesting and of course him being a king's indian defense player he's thinking ahead and he also knows that f5 is coming, so he's preparing it. So he's playing rook to e1 because this knight maybe wants to move in the future here. And also just preparation of moving the knight, not having any issues. And also keeping some, some pressure on the e-file if it ever opens up. 
Rook to e1, and then there's knight to d7. Of course, he's preparing f5, also swinging the knight to a better square as well. This is standard king's Indian and what you're supposed to do. Follow the plan. The king side is supposed to be expanded, and you're supposed to attack on the king side in these type of lines. So that's what he's doing. Knight to d7, followed by f5. a3 happens, but now if we play f5, knight to g5 and knight to e6 happens, and we're in some trouble here. You don't want to give these spaces up, so of course he preps it. But at the same time, when you push pawns around your king, multiple, you start to have weaknesses. And let's see what happens if we can exploit these weaknesses later. h6 is a move that you kind of have to make, but you really don't want to make, but you kind of have to make it, but you don't want to make it, but that's just how it is here. And it's give and take. Bobby Fischer says that. You got to give squares, and you know, give squares to get squares kind of thing. So h6, and then uh, white plays knight h4. Okay, knight h4 here. So he's anticipating f5. Maybe even playing f4 in some cases, but opening it up maybe too much might be a problem. Just opening it up, opening the position too much. And after f5, instead of f4 here, we have a beautiful move by Ding actually just understanding exactly what's going on here as he should. Taking on f5, the reason being is we cannot allow f4 to happen. If you're a King's Indian defense player, we love this f5 and f4 push. So, of course, capturing here actually delays the push slightly and also it doesn't make our bishop extremely bad if we allow f4 to happen white just has a terrible bishop for the rest of the game you can go bishop to h3 but there's weaknesses around the king and this pawn storm is going to be extremely hard to stop especially after f4 gets rolling then g5 comes then everyone comes and it's just a party it's a party over here h uh, f4 g5 h5 knight g6 is coming every piece i have is swinging to the king side so we're in some trouble so he actually captures and then captures back with the pawn. You usually always want to capture back with the pawn. So f4 is still an option. Even king h8 bringing the rook over. And just using the king side as the attacking ground. Also the bishop is now not uh, locked into the pawn chain. Queen to c2 here attacking the pawn. But also keeping just an eye here. Just keeping an eye on what's going on. Let's see what happens. After queen to c2, there's knight to f6 by Magnus and then b4. So we're finally getting this b4 push off. We need this expansion and we need to expand and prove our position. Sometimes things aren't ready. And if it isn't ready, you need to look and see what else can I do to improve my position. B4 just gain space. Why not do it? Playing on both sides of the board. That's a very hard concept to do sometimes. B4 and bishop to d7. Just developing my last piece or not my last piece, but I do need to complete my development. My queen's still in the back rank which is an error here and i just I'm, I'm cramped i'm cramped and many king's indian positions are cramped and if you continue to stay cramped you're going to be in a lot of trouble so bishop to d7s here uh he, he gets this off the back rank and then we follow up with c5 one of the pushes here that usually not usually but sometimes a lot of times when you're playing the king's indian defense if this happens if you c5 happens you could be in slightly in a little bit of trouble you could be in a little bit of trouble here if you're playing with the black pieces because the c5 here is very very strong it's going to just bust open the, the queen side here and even when this pawn gets doubled it's going to be some problems and let's see what happens these pawns are like past the fourth rank here into whites into black's territory and we're just going to keep pushing and it's going to be very hard to play this game e takes b4 a takes b4 e4 locking down the bishop here just kind of blocking it, but opening up ours at the same time. Also keeping an attacking ground here. We're just keeping an eye on things. This bishop needs to do stuff, and we need to play dynamic. King's Indian defense is about dynamic play, fighting for a win and not just a draw. So e4, that's what's played here. Just a very strong move, and c6 is on the board here. Locking it down, making his bishop even worse. He's like, where do I go? Bishop c8 makes no sense at all. So we go bishop e8 just to keep an eye on this diagonal. Maybe something will happen. Maybe this will help us. And now, guys, a very nice move. Very nice move. Clarifies the center. Says something needs to happen, and I want answers right now. By ding, he plays f3, and he actually just opens up the center here. When you see centers or a, a pawn structure or any kind of pawn structure that you can attack here, you need to do it. And actually, usually a pawn on e4, if you're playing with the black pieces, signifies that you have some space. And vice versa for black for for white, it would be e5, and white has a lot of space. But in this case. Black does not have the space that he wants, but he has the pawn on e4. So it's kind of weird here. And also a pawn on c6. This is a very dynamic, like sharp, tactical, what is going on here kind of position. My kind of games here. And one mistake could end the game. Let's see what happens. f3. Knight f takes d5. The bishop is now open. Things are about to get wild here, guys. Let's see. Knight takes d5. Knight takes d5. We just make some trades here. When trades start to happen, whoever has the bishops, which we both do. Black and white both have bishops. Bishop pairs here. The things can get very... 
very, very crazy here. So what happens is he clarifies. He actually says F takes E4 first. Open up the lines and diagonals for my pieces. F takes E4 and then Bishop takes E4. This looks extremely scary. I don't know what's going on yet, but something's definitely about to happen here. And white is definitely on the attack here. Sometimes you have to ask yourself, if you look at a position, what do you, who do you who would you rather be in this position? And if that if if it's your opponent, you are probably in trouble here. Now in this position, you probably would say you want to just we white in this position because they have the diagonal here, the knights over here, these bishops are pointing, the queen looks great, the rooks on the file. And if you look at the on the contrary, what does black have? They do have a file, they do have a bishop line. This bishop's passive, four pieces are on the back rank. This doesn't seem right. This doesn't seem right, and sometimes it could only be a matter of time before things get worse. Bishop takes e4, and knight to c3 from Magnus here. He's making it work. He's attacking pieces. He's doing everything that he can possibly do in this position. And after knight to c3, guys, pause the video. What would you actually play in this position? Here it is, guys. Here it is. Ding Loren went into the lab there. You can see him when he was on camera and he had his head, his hands over his head and he played this move right here. Bishop takes h6. Wow. It's on the board. It is on the board. Bishop takes h6. If you were thinking it, great job. There's a lot of things that can happen. First, if knight takes the rook, well, then we can just take the bishop and then we can come around and take the knight and have so it's just problems. So we can also take the rook. Like, there's just many things that can happen here. I am not. A, I don't want this to happen to me with the black pieces right now. So he didn't even capture it. And after bishop takes h6, the idea is queen takes c3. But the, he, he knows this. Like, of course, Magnus sees all of this. But what he what he what he did is actually queen f6 because he didn't want to take any of this. He, he doesn't want to part to any of like knight takes b1 and taking and actually checking and all kind of things can happen and actually guys after knight takes knight takes b1 the move is actually bishop to d5 followed by bishop f7 and then queen to g6 which is uh very scary in, in some lines here i think um but yeah queen f6 and then the bishop to uh, h7 check and king h8 again let's look at that again queen f6 is what he chose here which is a very awesome move, honestly. It just keeps an eye on the file. You got to be careful here. Queen to d4 check is looming. But I still like white here. I still like white. The pieces, like we're missing a lot of pieces. This knight is helping, but not as much as we think here. The pieces for white is actually very nice how they cover the right squares. They just cover all the squares we need here, which is amazing. And then after queen f6, bishop to h7 check, king h8. And now, guys, we're stuck in this position. What do you actually do? What would you do right here? How do you proceed? How do you finish this off? He checked them. I have a bishop hanging in on h6. My rook is hanging on b1. I, it, it doesn't feel like I'm actually crushing anything right now anymore. What do you actually do? Here's the move, guys. Here's the move. Rook takes e8. You could feel it shake through the computer screen and on the mouse. Rook takes e8. Oh, my goodness. Getting rid of the, the bishop here. Removing the defender is the theme of this tactic. And now... Look at this shot here. Rook takes e8, knight to g6, and now it all fall, It all works together. King takes h7, knight f8 check. King h6 because it's forced. And then after um, queen h7, uh, king to g5, queen h4, and then queen f4. Checkmate, guys. Look at a beautiful mate. The knight, it's untouchable right now, of course, due to the checks. And it's actually helping us checkmate here. Beautiful sequence of moves here. And it only took a second, a fraction of a second, when it, as soon as there was a mistake on the board, guys. These King's Indian games become very, very sharp. And a King's Indian expert was facing the King's Indian from the world champion. What a wild and sharp tactical game, guys. And this was game of the day. I'm National Master James Canty III, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys on the next one.